This is ANN News Brief. Good morning, I am Lucy Ademi. Cameroon school children were looking forward to start uh, of the school year on Monday and the government appears determined to ensure schools are open across the country. One problem though, the English-speaking region is warning against reopening the 4,500 schools in its crisis-prone areas. The only condition they gave under which they would allow schools to open is if their leader, Yuk Tabe, and nine others who have been handed life sentences by a military tribunal are freed. They were found guilty of secession, terrorism, and hostility against the state of Cameroon. The separatists have already attacked and wounded at least nine teachers for flaunting their directives. Governor of Cameroon's English-speaking Northwest region, Dabin Tchofo, says parents should send their children to school because all measures have been put in place to protect teachers and school children. Violence erupted in Cameroon's English-speaking regions in 2016 when teachers and lawyers protested against alleged discrimination at the hands of the French-speaking majority. The government responded with a crackdown that sparked an armed movement for an independent English-speaking state. Pope Francis will head to Africa on Wednesday for a seven-day visit to Mozambique and Madagascar, but will briefly visit Mauritius as well at the end of his trip. High on his agenda will be poverty, the environment, foreign exploitation of resources and corruption. The Pope's call for the protection of the environment is even now spurred by the Amazon fires that have ravaged the forests in Brazil. The Pope will promote sustainable development in Mozambique and Madagascar, where rampant deforestation has been a major problem. The World Bank says Mozambique has lost 8 million hectares of forest since the 1970s. That is about the size of Portugal. The French Agricultural Research Center, CIRAD, says at least 44% of forests in Madagascar have disappeared over the past six years, um, 60 years rather. Madagascar is the world's fourth largest island. The Center for Applied Research in the Apostolate at uh, Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. says Catholicism in Africa has grown by 238% between 1980 and 2015. We'll return after this message. Whether in your house, at your office, on your phone or online, we are there. We have the fact behind the headlines. We cut to the chase with the news you really need. We cover every angle. We are the bigger, better news network. We are African News Network. ANN. Watch ANN News on MITV from a truly African spirit. An African woman, Terare Trent from Zimbabwe, is being immortalized this week with a bronze statue alongside Oprah Winfrey in New York City. She is the only African woman to have been so honored. Trent appeared on the Oprah Winfrey show in 2009 and inspired the world with her story of overcoming animals' art to pursue a dream of education. The Zimbabwean educator and humanitarian is one of 10 statues for equality created by sculptors Gilly and Mark Skatner. Trent's statue depicts her with her arms aloft surrounded by the flame lily, the country's national flower. Trent grew up in a village and was denied an education because she was a girl like her mother and grandmother before her. She secretly learned to read by using her brother's books, but was married to an abusive husband when she was 11. But Trent did not let her dreams die. She moved to the U.S. and pursued a graduate degree, ultimately earning a Ph.D. after a 20-year effort. She taught global health at Drexel University and currently runs the Terrera Trent International Foundation, which focuses on providing education to children in rural Zimbabwe. She's a sought-after public speaker and author. Congratulations to her and that NN News Brief. For details of these and other breaking stories, visit our website, nnafrica.news. Conversation continues on our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at NN Africa TV. I'm Lucy Adeni.